Well, let's go now into our five observations. Again, Community America, the sponsors of our training camp live shows throughout training camp. We want to keep you right here, uh, whether you're at work or at home or working at home. Uh, a lot of people are doing that, obviously. But we want to give you the vibe of what's going on here at the University of Kansas Training Complex through training camp. Our five observations start with that defensive tackle group. And let's just take the defensive line. Well, let's just take the DTs. Play on words here. DT, dictating terms. Look at the first four games of the schedule, starting with the Houston Texans, then the Chargers, then the Ravens, and then the Patriots. What do all four of those teams have in common? They want to dictate terms at the line of scrimmage in the run game, including the design quarterback runs of Deshaun Watson or Lamar Jackson. That puts pressure on the defensive tackles, especially, but the whole defensive line, to dictate terms on that defensive line of scrimmage. And that's very important. Uh, all those teams want to run the ball. And like you said, all have mobile quarterbacks. Um, you think about just the running backs as well. Uh, the Texans with David Johnson, kind of curious how he looks this year, but if he can recapture the form that he had with the Arizona Cardinals, uh, they're going to run him a lot. Uh, Austin Eckler with the Chargers. And, of course, the Ravens run the ball more than anybody. So controlling the line of scrimmage and winning in the trenches will be so big early in the year when you really want to get off to a good start. Uh, the Chiefs allowed the second fewest rushing yards in the NFL last season um, from Week 11 on. And don't forget their performance against Derrick Henry in the conference championship game. So we've seen that this team can stop the run. They can be physical at the line of scrimmage. Um, we've seen them do it already. Now it's important just carrying that into this season, particularly early on. And again, all four quarterbacks that you're going to face, if Cam Newton's a starter in New England, which we expect, or Tyrod Taylor with the Chargers, all four can run, will run, and some of those have design runs for those guys. So that just it's one more runner. Uh, when you have 10 guys blocking 11, and those defensive tackles have got to win their job. Uh, let's just uh, one more sp spot here. Last year against the Colts, they had the ball 37 minutes and 15 seconds. Did Indianapolis Chiefs lose it? Uh, the Texans had the ball for 39 minutes and 48 seconds. 83 plays to 47 for the Chiefs. I haven't seen that disparity uh, in my brief 26 years in the NFL. And then in Green Bay, 33 minutes, 13 seconds with the ball with the pass. Again, dictating terms. If they got the ball, Pat Mahomes doesn't. And, and time of possession is a weird stat. It's hard to kind of look at um, how that affects games sometimes because the Chiefs score so fast. But those games with the eye test, and you combine that with the time of possession test uh, stat, you can kind of see how the Chiefs lost those games. And it was it was lost in the trenches on the line of scrimmage. Coming out early on, dominating the line of scrimmage um, with these defensive tackles and on the offensive side of the ball too will be very important to getting off to a good start. We started the show, Matt, with saying this is a – day one of the six-day grind it leads us to our second observation and that is surviving the fire and what about the rookies and what we mean with this so this is kind of a follow-up to our point from a few shows ago about how Andy Reid is intentionally overloading these rookies uh, with information. And I'm thinking about three rookies in particular, uh, Clyde edwards Elaire, Willie Gay Jr., and Legereus Sneed. They're getting a ton of reps out here and kind of being thrown in that metaphorical fire, uh, if you will. And, you know, for whatever reason, Clyde edwards Elaire, obviously, he's the one that's getting a lot of reps at running back with the ones. Uh, Willie Gay, he's getting um, a lot of reps with the second team at linebacker, and we'll likely see him on defense at some point uh, during the season. And Legereus Sneed, just because of injuries uh, in the secondary, he's getting a lot of reps out there. So how do these guys respond to that? They didn't have rookie minicamp. They didn't have OTAs. They didn't have all those things. This is their first chance at really being out there physically on a football field with the Chiefs. How did they respond to that, uh, that demand? And I really liked what Willie Gay said earlier this summer. He said, sure, it might look like a disadvantage for us rookies, but I'm going into this thinking it could be a positive because if I can come into this camp, if I can absorb this information right away and come out of it stronger, I'll be set up for the rest of my career. I'll have a leg up on my peers for, for the rest of my career. So I love that attitude. You know, it's not always perfect out there. But these guys are grinding, and they're getting better, and they're maximizing every single rep. It leads us now to our third point of our five observations, and that is volume with velocity. Okay, we know that Andy Reid piles on. It's not just the rookies now. He piles on uh, with the veterans, but he does it at tempo. And one of the things that he has done, he alluded to it during his press conference today when he was asked about conditioning. Andy Reid doesn't stop practice and run 40-yard gassers. He doesn't do that. But within his practice and all the great coaches that I have seen, whether it's the college level, the pro level, and even other sports like soccer or basketball, they condition within their practice. It's more game-like, and that's what you have here. And the next six days in this grind, it's taking in all this volume but doing it at a high speed and also conditioning your game. 
Sure. And, you know, Tedrick Thompson, a safety we'll talk about here in a minute, he called this a workaholic camp. And in a good way, <laughs> he mentioned, you know, it's up-tempo, it's fast. Every minute is maximized. Uh, and that's what that's what this is all about. Um, you know, for new players on this roster, you're you're learning basically at full speed. Walkthroughs are over. This is this is full-on camp here. You know, guys like uh, Coleccio Simile, uh, Mike Rimmers on the offensive line, they're taking in a lot of information and executing it at a very fast pace. And it's who can keep up with that. Um, I, you know, like I said, Tedrick Thompson calling this a workaholic camp. Who can benefit from from taking advantage of every single rep? And I think ultimately, like you said, is a reflection of Coach Reed and the culture he's built here. Yeah, let's keep in mind, why does he bulk it up right now? He likes to get off to a fast start. He has won 11 straight games in September. That's crazy. You mentioned the left side of the offensive line. I'm so impressed right now with Coleccio Semele and then Mike Remmers, uh, because Eric Fisher's missed the last couple of days of, of camp within the concussion protocol, but Remmers is at that left tackle spot. So now you have a new left guard, left tackle volume with velocity, and it's important for those guys to capture it and work together. And we see Mike Remmers play at a lot of different positions along the offensive line through this camp already, getting some work at tackle right now. When we signed him, it was kind of the idea he could maybe be that swing guy. So the fact that he's getting a lot of reps out here um, at different positions is really an advantage, I think, going into the season where um, it's a long year. If you have injuries along the offensive line, Mike Remmers will go back to you know August 19th and remember when he was playing tackle out here on the first team and, uh, and draw on that to succeed in like December for whatever we know. You need a swing tackle and Remmers can play both guard and tackle but if he can capture that on the left tackle, right tackle, fill in or the Chiefs will go tackle over tackle. Uh, when doing the play-by-play -play, I'll mention that because they go unbalanced so that third tackle position is way more important than people think. It our next point, and it's tight at tight ends. Ricky Shields-Jones was injured um, a couple days ago. He was working out today. It was good to see. But that left the Chiefs with just two tight ends on the roster. Well, wait a minute. They did sign another one, and he's a San Francisco 49er. So it made me go back and look at my charts of Super Bowl 54. He's on there. He just was inactive for a Super Bowl and was never active for the 49ers. But Daniel Helm, out of Duke, a tight end, signed but now the Chiefs have three tight ends. We're talking about the grind. That's a lot of repetitions for this tight end group. And Deion Yell there too, but he's been injured throughout, throughout most of this camp. So you're really looking at Nick Kaiser and Daniel Helm. It's like, all right, guys, here's an opportunity. Um, this is an opportunity maybe they didn't think they'd have um, this early on in camp. But when there's injuries, it's what can you do to take advantage of this situation? Um, you know, Grand Valley State for Nick Kaiser was around this offense last year on the uh, on the practice squad. So he kind of knows what things are about. He's been around here. So perhaps he has a bit of an advantage there. But, um, you know, coach said that they're growing every day. And that's all you can hope for with these guys. They're young players, but they both have talent and ability. Uh, it, it'll be an interesting battle to uh, see how, we, how it plays out here. But uh, for one of those two guys, there could be a huge opportunity here with the Chiefs. Again, we're expecting an exclusive interview with Tano Passigno, the Chiefs uh, defensive and defensive tackle, special teams guy. Um, we're going to ask him. We saw him in kickoff coverage today running down the field. He looked like, <laughs> I don't know, like a wildebeest yeah. that was sprinting. It was awesome. I mean, his athletic ability, but we're hopefully going to have Tano here in a little bit. Uh, but again, a new tight end, Daniel Helm, as the Chiefs dealing with some injuries at that spot with Deion Yelder and Ricky Seals-Jones, both injured at this point. Opportunity. It seems like we're, we're going to do this like every observation we have in these shows and our five observations. That is, we're always upgrading, like your phone um, or your computer is always needing upgrades. We're going to do another one, and that's Opportunity 4.0. In this time, we talked about the grind. Who is getting a real shot, a real shot to um, impress the coaches and maybe step up of where people thought they would be going into camp? Who do you have on your mind today? Uh, today is Tedrick Thompson. I mentioned him a bit earlier. Um, he's a guy that comes over from the, um, the Seattle Seahawks. And a just a few years ago, in 2018, he stepped in for Earl Thomas, who was injured for the rest of the season. And he played really, really well there. Um, still only 25 years old. Last season for him was kind of a lost season. Didn't play probably to his ability early on and then uh, got hurt, had a shoulder injury, missed the rest of the year. Well, he's on the Chiefs now. Brett Veach picked him up, and he's been getting a lot of reps out here at safety. Really curious to see what he can do for this team. He's one of those guys that kind of a reclamation project. Maybe um, you're still young. Can you come into a new situation and really unleash your full potential? Uh, I've liked what I've seen from Tedrick Thompson so far. Yeah, you can see his athleticism. We talk about the um, athleticism of the safety group. We mentioned on that a couple shows ago because they can all do different things, and they can cover the, the uh, question during Andy Reid's news conference about, hey, could the Honey Badger play corner? Well, yeah, he could. We don't put him out there, but he's got the skill to do it. But Sorensen, uh, we can see that along with Armani Watts and others. We know about Thornhill. But Thompson seems to fit that. He only had six games last year with the Seahawks, as you alluded to, because he had hamstring problems. 
But in those six games, Matt, he had two interceptions in six games. Mm -hmm. It tells you if he is, has the ability to play a 16-game schedule – and even filling in as a fourth safety that you could get some big-time plays from.